Now, Noel Biedemann is the American entrepreneur behind AshleyMadison.com and said that based on the numbers that it's already attracting, Australia is shaping up to be one of the most unfaithful countries in the world. Well. That is a title do we necessarily want. Joining us on the phone is Noel. How are you going today, Noel? I'm doing great. I'm at the airport in case anyone hears any background noise, but no, I'm not being deported. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. Can you tell us a little bit more about your website? Yeah, listen, you know, it's a dating service with an incredible caveat, which is it's for people already in relationships. And I know that's so controversial, and, and I accept that, but the bottom line is I have 5.5 million members, tons of demand for this service. Well, is the demand... Um Amazed you know, I mean, certainly you would have had high hopes uh, for the product, for this, for this website. But have, has it sort of even gone beyond what you'd imagined? Yeah, there's no way when I started Ashley Madison back in 2002 that you know, less than a decade later, I'd see myself down in Australia launching the international platform for it. I, I couldn't have imagined I'd have this much traction to it. But listen, that just says a lot. I think about the human condition and about uh, faithfulness in general. Mm. How did the idea come about? It came about, that's a great question, because I came across some research that said that up to 30% of people going to singles dating sites weren't single at all. They were already in relationships. Wow. And to me, that was like, oh, my goodness, those people would prefer a social network of their own. And so that's why I created Ashley Madison. And uh, what's, what's the, uh, I guess, reception or uh, the response you've been receiving from people overseas versus those in Australia? You know, listen, the, the response is kind of universal. I think people are just surprised that it's this popular. But, you know, some of the things that are always unique in different communities are how many women would join versus men and what mm. kind of professions people have. And so as we roll this service out through Australia, I'll be able to almost create a sociology experiment, if you will, and let media and other people and researchers and universities, we work with four universities now, to help them gather data on what kind of people use a service like this and what drives people to have an affair. Do you think, Noel, it would have been the, as, as popular a site or concept 10 years ago? Yeah, listen, you know, I think, you know, affairs have always been about um, opportunity. And so take a look at Facebook. It's being cited in, you know, 20% of divorce yeah. cases, some people estimate. And so it wasn't created for that purpose, but people are using it as a way to reach out to past lovers and boyfriends and girlfriends. And so that, that's just a human condition. And, and, and the workplace still is where the majority of affairs happen. You can't really stop people from getting attracted to one another, especially if they're unhappy on their home front. Do you, no, no doubt uh, uh, it's a wonderful entrepreneurial move and tapping a, uh, a market like that and, and, and providing or satisfying some demand. Uh, do you, in any ways, do you feel sort of uneasy about sponsoring a behaviour that is largely considered unacceptable? I, I guess I've taken the approach that most Western thoughtful societies decided long ago to stop trying to legislate adults in their behavior. We yeah. say, hey, if you want to drink alcohol and you know that can lead to disease and addiction, then, you know, we have to, you have to be the right age and be sure. appropriate. If you want to smoke cigarettes or, you know, bungee jump or, you know, swim with <laughs> sharks, we, we, we kind of let people be. And that's no more relevant than when it comes to their personal sex lives. So I, I don't think we're going to ever be able to step into people's bedrooms into that regard. And so that, that's what allows me, I think, for the most part, to say that this is an acceptable foray for my entrepreneurial drive. Now, Mel, you've got an interesting slogan to go on your website, which says, life's short, have an affair. What's the response <laughs> been to that one? Yeah, well, listen, I, I think that's just witty marketing. I, I don't think anybody who hears that phrase or sees that billboard is going to be, who's in a happy marriage anyway, is going to stop and go, you know what? It is short. I, I'm going to go and cheat on my partner. That's ridiculous. Nobody's that pliable. And so what I'm trying to do is, you know, not necessarily have the last word, but start the discussion. Clearly, that's a starting point. And, and listen, there's a great story behind that. When I put that first billboard out there, that was in 2007. I smacked up in the middle of Hollywood. What happened? Ben Stiller saw the billboard. His agent called me, and we ended up marketing his movie at the time, The Heartbreak Kid, about a guy who cheats on his fiance right on their honeymoon, uh, wow. you know, with Paramount Pictures. And so, stranger things happen in life. I guess I fell in love with the slogan right after that. Oh, just phenomenal. It doesn't, it doesn't get any more effective as far as slogans go than that, I would have thought. Uh, no, we appreciate your time this morning. It's a, a fascinating concept inside and just mm. part of this very rich tapestry that the internet has provided for us. Noel, thank you. Thanks again, guys. Noel Biederman there, founder and creator of AshleyMadison.com, a site that facilitates um, yeah, extramarital affairs. Absolutely insane and, of course, very controversial, but it, does, it definitely has a different outlook on, um, on what affairs are about. Yeah.